Hello everyone, and welcome to another Monster in World video, this is The Game Economist, and today we're going to be giving the new Lunastra Gamma Set an analytical review. Before we begin, I want to mention that I have reviewed both of the leaked armor sets for Azura Magdaros and Zenajiva. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll leave a link in the description and in the comment section. Also, I'd like to explain that I grade armor by adding all of the empty slots together, along with the default skills for each piece of armor as well as the set bonus skills. I then will analyze if the piece of armor being reviewed adds anything new to the armor meta or whether it's a dud. Let's get started. Beginning with the armor resistance, you'll note that it gives three points of resistance to fire, which is not as good as it could be, but is still a very respectable amount of elemental resistance that'll help you build for fire resist because you're trying to get it all the way to 20, something I do all the time for fighting high damage fire monsters like Lunastra and Teostra. The other thing I noticed is that rather than giving negative resistance to thunder, you've got a positive single point per piece of armor for thunder, so that's nice versus Kirin. However, it does also come with a negative three points when you fight an ice monster and I have my suspicions we may see an ice monster down the road very soon. So for resistance, I'm going to give the Lunastra Gamma set a B for being a mixed bag. Okay, so what I want to talk about next are the two set bonus skills that the Lunastra set gives us. With two pieces of armor, you'll receive stamina cap up. This gives you an increase to your total stamina bar. So you're going to need a ration to get that final bit of bar to fill out, you gotta actually eat a little piece of meat. And at four pieces of the set, you're going to get Mind's Eye slash Ballistics, which will either cause your melee weapon to no longer be deflectable, or if you're using like a bow or a bow gun, it's going to give your ranged arrows and bullets better range. It's a great skill, but requiring four pieces of the armor set is very unrealistic because bows should be using crit element and bow guns should be using spare shot. In this case, on this armor set, I would say that there aren't too many good combination for bow users to pick up the stamina cap set bonus skill, so Lunastra set bonus skills will mostly not be factored into the score for the armor pieces. And what I'm saying is that's a bad thing. Basically, they're not getting a higher score than they could have otherwise gotten if they had a more valuable set bonus skill. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can take a look at the Emperor's Crown. Emperor's Crown, that's actually a very suitable name for a Lunastra helmet. I also love the cool figure that they've added to the new armor set. It has a glowing, cracked characteristic that makes it look a little bit like marble. Anyways, you can see that the Emperor's Crown has three small decoration slots, two levels of wide range, and one level of peak performance. That officially makes the Wiggler helmet obsolete, which to be honest, Makes me a little sad, I don't know about you guys. Uh, maybe one day they'll release a Wiggler Gamma helmet that's twice as long as the first one, right? It just looks totally ridiculous. But yeah, you're getting an extra small decoration slot on the Emperor's Crown and peak performance, which is considered a high priority damaging skill. So this piece of armor is being given an S tier rating for setting a new meta on the wide range skill and arguably a new meta for helmet efficiency. It's really not a bad start to this uh, armor review. I'd also like to point out that you can pair this helmet with the beta chest piece to complete peak performance, or you can pair it with the beta arms to complete the wide range. So it's a pretty strong addition to Monster Hunter World's armor meta. Okay, and basically that was the best piece of armor in the set. The rest of it kind of goes downhill. So next we'll look at the new chest piece, Empress Male Gamma. You can see that it has one large decoration slot, two levels of earplugs, and one level of tool specialist. The nice thing is that it does add a new, decently efficient way to build earplugs for the chest armor slot. However, in terms of efficiency, it's completely beaten by the upcoming Zora Claus Gamma, which based on when I'm releasing this video, we're gonna have access to that in about two weeks. Uh, and that one's going to give you an empty small decoration slot rather than tool specialist, that's an advantage. And really that's one of the two things that's holding back the Emperor's Male Gamma. Not only does it not build any of the important set bonus skills, 
but you're also stuck with the efficiency of the basil coil unless you really wanted to take the tool specialist skill, which isn't a bad skill for fighting like Behemoth. However, for most other monsters, I wouldn't recommend it. With that being said, this armor piece is still going to be placed in the B tier because earplugs are a high priority utility skill, and we're able to finish that skill off using the chest armor slot now. Okay, moving on to the Lunastra arms, we have the Empress of Ambrose's Gamma, and at first sight, I would describe them as confusing. Like, you really need to break down what you're getting from this piece of armor. You get one large decoration slot, one small decoration slot, two levels of agitator, and one level of evade extender. That's a lot to take in. First of all, I'd like to start out by saying what you aren't doing is you aren't building another level of the Draken Armor set's Master Touch bonus skill, right? We know that you need four pieces of the Draken armor set in order to complete Master's Touch. So you could ask yourself if you want to trade out the Draken Van Braces for the Empress Van Braces. See, now we're just jumping right into very practical, looking right at the meta. And I would say that it's not worth it in the end. Evade Extender is nice, and Empress Van Braces are certainly an efficient piece of armor for the arm armor slot, but Evade Extender is not a top priority skill. And the Lunastra Armor set bonus skill is really where these Van Braces start to fall behind. I think if you were single-mindedly trying to prioritize both Agitator and Evade Extender, like maybe in some build that doesn't depend on weapon sharpness, and therefore a build that wouldn't care about Draken Armor, then this would be an S tier piece of armor for that. However, that must mean you've already completed some other meaningful set bonus skill and or you've completed all of the other priority damage skills that come before agitator like mainly like attack boost peak performance maybe crit boost depending on what in the world you're actually putting together to me that seems extremely niche and i'm not sure exactly how to rate an extremely niche piece of armor that is also pretty efficient i don't think it would be fair to put it into c tier so let's put it into a b minus tier in this case it's all about usefulness Okay, and then after that, we have the Empress Coil Gamma, and it's kind of in the same boat as the Van Braces. There may be some extremely niche build that uses this piece of armor, in particular something extra defensive, otherwise this piece of armor will probably never be high priority. Notice that you're given two levels of Evade Window, which you can finish off with one Evasion Window Charm. Did you know that the Evasion Window Charm gives you three levels? So pairing that with this coil would finish that skill off. You're also then pairing Evade Window with two levels of Health Boost, meaning this is a pretty defensive coil. But again, I don't think this is going to be a choice for most builds, just because in Monster Hunter World, damage is so heavily prioritized over all other skills. So similar to the Van Braces, let's say that this coil is efficient, but it's not clear that it's useful, and therefore I'm going to go ahead and give it a B- tier rating as well. Alright, finally it's time to take a look at the new Empress Greaves Gamma. The Empress Greaves are an even better version of the new Empress Male Gamma, considering this time you're getting a small damage boost from Agitator. Both new pieces of armor offer two levels of earplugs and one large decoration slot, making them viable options for finishing earplugs, just like the Basil Coil, right? However, just like in the case for the Empress Chest Piece, in the case for the Empress Greaves, you're going to be better off just using the new Zora Gamma arms that we're going to be getting down the road, because Zora's small decoration slot is going to be more flexible for building other skills onto your build, and Agitator usually isn't a first or second pick out of the damaging skills. And once again, neither of the Lunastra set bonus skills are that important either, which is something we have to consider when handing out a grade. So my analysis of the legs are that they offer the player a new way to build earplugs efficiently in the leg slot, just like the new Lunastra chest piece. However, in the end, that is a limited priority for many meta builds. And with that being said, let's give it a B tier rating as well. All right, and that wraps up my analysis of the Lunastra Gamma Armor Set. It's definitely one of the more confusing sets to talk about, mainly because the pieces on the set actually do offer a lot of build efficiency, but then when you turn your head sideways and really look at what they're offering, it's mostly just stuff for very niche builds and nothing that is going to shake up the game in a meaningful way. At least the helmet is a strong addition to support builds, and that's why we gave it an S tier rating. So what was the average grade of the set overall? It is just shy of a B+, just shy of it. I did hear some people strongly hating on this armor set, 
but a better way to describe it is that it's just average, which is enough to dash our high expectations and leave us feeling disappointed. Okay, well let me know if I've missed anything. Do you agree with my assessment of the new Lunastra armor set, or do you think my rating was accurate? I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.